My name is Ambassador John Fashionu, formerly a professional footballer playing in the EPL, which is the English Premier League in England, and television presenter, and uh, a little bit of a movie actor, well, a few actors, a few little bit of movies, but you know, not too much. One day, I was selected to play for Nigeria, and I got on a plane, and uh, the late MKO Abiola, my grandfather, godfather, brought me to Nigeria and I went into a place in Suruleri. I can't remember what the hotel was, but I stayed in a hotel in Suruleri and I played for the Super Eagles. And I noticed that every time Shegun Degbomi or the late Mudulawal would say, Fash, go to the right or go to the left. When I went to the right, the ball would go to the left. When I go to the left, the ball will go to the right. And I'm thinking, why is it that every time I'm training with uh, my so-called, my brothers, why is it that I haven't touched the ball for 90 minutes? There's something wrong here. The coach said the first time, don't worry, Fash. It's okay. I came the second time. I came the third time. And I came on the fourth occasion to play for my country. Coach said to me, Auto Gloria, Brazilian coach, that's right. He said, look, Fash, this game is a team game. Football is a team game. A squad is 22 players. These boys don't want to play with you. And I've noticed for me to keep that team together, we have to have unity. And if all of them have rallied around behind you and said, we want Big Fash, great. But they're rallying around behind you and saying, we don't want this English man's football. We don't like his style. Now, why was that? Because when I went back in and asked the players and found out, you had yin and yang. What do I mean? Night and day, high and low. We had the opposites. English football, Nigerian football. The English invented the game of a football. And it was the Brazilians who took the game of football from the English cultivated it, made it the sexy, whoa, lovely legs they do, <clears throat> excuse me, the diddle overs with the ball and all the tricks that they do. And we Nigerians, we took the game from the Brazilians. We didn't take the, we didn't take the game from the English. We took the game from the Brazilians. And so the game of football that the Brazilians and Nigerians we play is totally different to the game of football the English were playing. And the English game of football was ball in the air, elbows, a few eyes cut, a few legs broken, completely different. So what I found out was, if you don't go back and interact with the players, you will never know why you've been ostracized. So when they used to say, oh, Big Fash turned down his country, he never played for his country. I'm sorry to say all of that was Donald Trump, fake news. So that just also gives you an insight of how you have to get into a player's mind to know what's going on. Well, you know, one thing I always say is don't think negative, think positive. That was a very wonderful performance. We now know that we had the youngest team at the World Cup. We were not the eldest, we were the youngest. Possibly in the world of football, you try to have experience with youth. Possibly we had a little bit too much youth and not enough experience. Because when you're one up and you've got to kill the game, huh, nobody even sees the ball. I can remember when I was playing against Arsenal, Liverpool, Manchester United, if we were winning, we just keep kicking the ball over the stand, over the stand, wasting time every minute, every minute, because you kill the game. Maybe a little bit more experience for our young boys would have helped at, in Russia, but the future looks very, very positive. And I will say to the coach, coach, you keep doing what you're doing because you have discovered some wonderful potential players there as professional footballers. I think um, the coach 
has almost formed a very formidable Nigerian Super Eagles team. Form your team with the young ones, the youth. You know, when I was playing to the latter start, uh, age when I was 30, 31, I could stay in the middle of the park and do nothing because my experience told me where the ball was going to go. And I would have young legs running around everywhere, but I would be the one who would stand in the middle, score the goal and get the glory. We don't have so many of that, those players at all now. What we've got is we've got players who will run, 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 run. We call them chickens with no heads. That's what we call them in the game of football. What we do need is a little bit more experience. But coach, he is doing a wonderful job. And I like what he's doing. I accept him. And I've said when so many people have said so many detrimental things about the coach, this is part of being a football coach. When you're a football coach, you learn to be like a referee. Nobody likes you. Referee comes off, there's always somebody who's got a complaint to the referee. You're a man that nobody will ever like. You know, um, we have to be very careful. and I've always been very careful with my utterances or what we're saying when we're talking about football because there is a hierarchy. And as a veteran on football, it wouldn't be right for me to criticize a coach or for people to presume that I'm trying to over talk on a, uh, for the minister or anything. But, but what I do say is keep the players you have got. Well, if I was, well, that's really putting me on the spot. Uh, I mean, um, if you ask me, can I coach? I will tell you, yes, I can coach. I've been in the game 25 years, so I must be able to coach. Coaching is the art of communication. You have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to inspire a player. A player who's just missed an open goal. He looks to you for inspiration. He doesn't look for you to scream and shout at him and, and, and throw the books down on the floor. So would I coach? No, I wouldn't. Could I coach? Yes, I can. If a player comes up to you, and I'm not going to name names, and says, Coach, I don't want to play anymore. I'm getting too old. There's no need to ask him, why, what, can you come back again? His mind is already set. Because the best thing in the world is kicking a ball around in front of 100,000, 50,000 people going crazy and you have an opportunity to kick a ball around. You never ever lose that will to want to play in front of a, a full house. So if a player through his own volition comes to you and tells you, I'm retiring, there must be a reason why. So sometimes look inside Kochi and find out what's inside the player's head and find out why it is. Is it that you and him are clashing? Is it that the, the, the player and some of the other players are not getting on? There are also different reasons why and it's for the coach to find it out. Well, you know, you know I always, I loved, I, I was mesmerized and I'll tell you this, this is wonderful. One day we were playing against Arsenal and this black guy came on and he looked a very tall black guy and he was lanky. His name was Kanu. And he came on and I looked at him and I shook his hand. He came over onto the pitch and he, he shook my hand and I thought, who is this kid here? He wants to come in the middle of the match and change the game? This boy was amazing. Kanu scored two goals within 30 minutes and changed the whole game. And I loved that. And I, I never forget, I stood at the other end of uh, the Arsenal the stadium and I watched this boy single-handedly change the dynamics of football. Another one of our players who I have the mighty, the highest respect for. Uh, JJ was playing for Bolton Wanderers. I was playing for Wimbledon. It was a freezing cold day in England and we were playing uh, at Bolton Wanderers and the game was a very mundane game, nothing exciting. It was just there, Wimbledon playing against Bolton. 
Then this young black boy came on the pitch, again was substituted. His name was JJ. At the time, I didn't really know him. And this boy caused havoc. This boy was like a magician. The ball was just stuck to his foot. And I, as I said, then I was playing. I was a second leading goal scorer in the English Premier League. And I've never seen a boy have so much close control of a ball. Kocha! That is absolutely glorious! You know, I've got to put them in the right category. You have a category where you say, great players. You have a category where you say, the good players. Uh, you have a category where you say you have the average players. Each one of those categories are able to make a living. The Ronaldos, uh, the, the JJs, they are specialist players. And I don't use that word very, very often. They are, really are. They've got God's gift. They do things which <laughs> are not normally even coached in football. Most of the other players, Kanu, Fashionus, they were good players. They were okay. They were good players. They did well. I've always been a Manchester United man. My former club that I played for was Aston Villa. I, I used to love Aston Villa. But I think going back, the great George Best. Bestie, one of the best footballers in the world. You know, I liked what he had. But I, what I will say is that one thing I like Chelsea and I have a great respect for Chelsea for is that they brought in a lot of African players, a lot of black players and I like that. The more we can get in the best. You can imagine the days of when John Fashnu was playing professional football in the English Premier League, myself and John Barnes, we were probably the only black players there and maybe one other. So it was a little bit, um, shall we use the word lonely when you're playing at Old Trafford in front of 60,000 supporters and you're one of the only blacks there and they're all shouting racist comments to you it can get a little bit um, lonely but the nice thing is you grow to have a thicker skin